Okay, I'm just going to demo a new asset I made. This is called Asset Library Layout. And the point of it is, is when you're using a asset pack um, and you want to like load everything into your scene in a neat little grid, and then you can pick and choose from those assets so you have them all visible at the same time. So the first thing you do is you select a directory. This can contain OBJ and FBX files. Uh, it also will do a recursive search. To see if you have nested folders in here, it'll search through all of those. Keep that in mind. So I'm just going to pick a folder that has FBX in it. Next thing is I'm going to give it a name. I'm going to call this um, trees. And then I press run. And then it'll create a geo node at the object level. Inside that geo node is a subnetwork. And inside that subnetwork, uh, there are FBX archive import nodes for each of the FBX files in the directory. Uh, it also packs each of them and um, it um, adds a group as well. And so um, if I press S out here to selection, selection mode, I go to geometry select mode and I press 9 to toggle this group visibility, group selection. Then I can see that you know each of these objects is a uh, single pack primitive and it has the, the group applied to it. And then um, the spacing um, parameter on the geo level subnet, this will determine the spacing in between each of the assets in the grid. And there's a default spacing applied, uh, which is using the bounding box. But if you want to add extra padding, you can use this. The row width um, determines uh, how big the rows are. So if I put this row width very large, then everything's in a single row. But if I make it smaller, then it starts to wrap them um, up until I go to zero, and then everything's in a single uh, line the other way. So uh, you can just adjust the layout to whatever works well for you. And going back, um, if you look on the HDA, there's a default spacing and default row, uh, row width. So this will you know, set the default values when you create the subnet, but you can then customize them on the subnet as well. Um, yeah, so that's like the first chunk of functionality here. And the second bit is the kind of pick and choose thing. So kind of the idea with making a geo level subnet is that say I have like a geo here and a grid and well, since um, Houdini units are very small compared to other 3D programs, um, these assets are actually quite large in Houdini units. That's why I'm going to give this grid 10,000 by 10,000. But now that I have my, my geo node, as you see, I can actually just cut and paste this, um, this uh, prototyping grid here, this, this asset library. And now I have them kind of both in the same place. And I can, I can merge them together if I like. Uh, my grid and my asset library, uh, for example. And then I might uh, just move this over to the side a bit. Um, and so, yeah. Um, and now at this point, I want to, like, I have everything in this subnet here, but how do I, like, if I want to just click on one of these and then use it in my scene, how would I do that? Well, I have a tool for that. So there's two ways to do this, okay? So the first of all is if I go to my asset library layout, and I, I pin this, for example, right? And I go to this other tab, Reference from Selection. Now, if I go back to my geo node here, and I click on my trees, right? And I, and I okay, I'll click, click on the Transform. I'll press, I'll go to Selection mode while I'm, while I'm clicking on this. Okay, and now as you see, since I'm on Select uh, Geometry Select, I can select each of these boxes. So if I click, say, this house, for example, and then I click Reference Selected, now it'll actually just give me an FBX archive import right here, which which is um, so you can kind of extract it that way. Um, and you know this this works with multiple. If I select a couple of them it, and then you click the button, it'll you know just it'll just make a different uh, import node for each of them. As you see, it did not auto layout there, but if you if you check this button auto layout, then when you run this. Um, uh, Second here, let's just select stuff. Oh yeah, so we just select these things, and and now now it auto laid it out. So I, I made this a toggle because sometimes you don't really want this to happen because it's kind of annoying. But um, yeah, and then also like if I don't select anything here beforehand, I can also click the button, and then I it'll do an interactive selection right. Then I press enter, and then it 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 just imports all those right here. 
Um, okay, so that's kind of the gist of it, but there's also a there's a shelf tool, so you don't have to keep this pinned. So if I click create shelf tool, um, okay, actually, I'm just gonna, uh, I already did this, so I'll just show you how I do this. Um, well, so say like I'll create a new shelf tab here. I'll call this like my shelf or like my custom shelf or whatever, right? Um, okay, and now here's my shelf, it's empty. So I click create shelf tool. Uh, you don't see any results here, but um, if I go edit shelf tab, and then I go to tools here, as you see, the first one is actually from from my asset. And I did this on purpose. I gave the the label a zero in front of it, so because this this list of like shelf possibilities is huge. So I put it at the top by appending a zero, by prepending a zero. So if I click this and then click accept, now here's my button here, and then um, basically I can just click the button. Okay, so it says select a node in the network view first. So I need to select my node, which will uh, house my selection. Then I click the button. Um, oh, well, what the hell? Okay, well, uh, so I think I needed to press escape first. So if I click the button here, let's see. Reference. Okay, so yeah, I click it, then I press the button, and then I can do my selection this way. Press enter. Yeah, and it just works using the shelf tool. Um, I don't have to have that pinned. And then also... Um, you know, if I do a selection beforehand, I can just click the button and it'll load them all up in here. And then since it's on the shelf, you can uh, add a hotkey to it really easily. So you don't have to keep on pressing the button there. Um, that's it. Um, and uh, yeah, so uh, if you're interested in the code, um, I could possibly make another video. I'm not going to get super into it, but basically it's a bunch of Python here. Um, yeah. So that's pretty much it. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed.